In this video, let's learn about HTTP request headers. We have talked about HTTP request headers in one of the first videos, but in this video, let's talk more about it because this is actually a very important topic. Now, what is the purpose of a HTTP request header? Well, a HTTP request header provide additional information to the service in order to help the server to respond to the HTTP request. Now, you may ask why we cannot just provide all the information we need in the URL because it's part of the information that has to be provided to the server anyways, right? Just add all of that. Since we learned the query string, we just provide all of the information through the query stream, why we cannot do that? For several reasons. First of all, the URL itself has a length limitation, right? If you want to provide all the information to it, it's not possible. Although the length limitation is quite long, I don't remember off the top of my head, 2000 characters, but there's a length limitation. So keep that in mind. Secondly, it's actually, we have, let's actually run the application and let's try to remember what type of headers we generated by the browser. Okay, so let's just run it and let's come over here and take a look at this uh, developer tool. So F12, open up developer tool and then refresh it. Let's come over here and highlight the request that we want to examine. Okay. And in the headers tab over here, scroll down to request headers. And if we check this, we can see the raw headers like this. If we don't check it, we can see it in this format. So this format seems to be better. You can see that by default, it has so many different headers that is generated by the browser. Same with Postman. So go to Postman over here, go to a simple get request. You can see we have headers and we have seven different headers. Click on this. This is by default. By default, you don't see those headers because those headers is actually automatically generated. It says auto generated headers. Okay, so all of these are actually sent to the server. Although you didn't specify that in Postman, it's automatically generated from the browser. It's even more than that. Okay, we don't want to have all of this in the URL. The URL should be developer or the, uh, the user specified, not automatically generated. We don't want to pollute the, the URL. Now, another more important reason why we don't want to put everything into the URL is because of safety concern. You know, when you navigate through the URL, whether it's going over here or going over here, you can see that the browser actually keeps the history of what URL I have specified before. So for example, if you want to provide some kind of authentication information or authorization information, when you put it in the URL, that means everybody who can access the computer and access this particular browser instance, they will be able to see your sensitive information through the URL. So for safety concern, we don't want to put everything in the URL. And one of the other place we can put is, of course, you can put it in the body, which is the same thing in terms of security, but the but header is usually what we use for authentication and authorization purpose. And in this video, let's actually do a very simple authentication. Now we have this delete logic over here. If the ID is in the query string and we are successfully being able to convert that into an integer, then we trigger the deletion method, but not everyone's supposed to be able to delete. So let's add a little bit of the authorization logic over here. So what the logic is, let's come up with a scenario. So when a request, when a delete request comes to the server, it has to contain a authorization header. HTTP request header that is called authorization and the authorization headers value has to be a hard coded value. Let's just hard code it for now. Right? We're learning it. We don't want to come up with very complicated case. So let's just hard code it. Okay. So let's go to our postman over here and let's come up with that scenario over here. Okay. Let's go to delete request over here and let's click on headers in the headers. We can say authorization. So this is the authorization header. Click on that in the value. Let's say we're just going to hard code Frank by name. So when authorization header contains a specific string, that's when you allow the user to execute the deletion. Okay. So let's jump back to implement that logic. So we're going to access the header by saying context dot request dot headers. See, this is also a dictionary and here we can use square bracket and I'm going to say authorization, hover the mouse over that. This also gives us a string value. 
and we can compare that with the hard-coded string. So if headers equal Frank, then we are going to execute this. Otherwise, we are going to return something. So we're going to copy this and we're going to say you are not authorized. You are not authorized. Just let's just say this. You are not authorized to delete. Okay. And let's run. All right. It is running and let's go to Postman. And first of all, let's use a different value. Let's try that. Okay. Try to delete employee number one, uh, which we know that exists, right? because for now, actually, let's go to get employees and run it again. And we see three different ones because we restarted the application, right? So we know that we have three different employees by default. This one is one, this is two, and this is three. So let's go to an employee and let's try to delete the first one. And we're providing Frank one, 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 like a random value and click on send button. Now you see that the result says you are not authorized to delete. Although it says 200 okay here, we're going to deal with the status code later. It's not supposed to be okay, right? Because the person's not authorized. Now, if we change it to the correct value, then click on send button. Then it says employee is deleted successfully. This 200 okay is fine. Now let's go to get employees, click on send, and you can see the first one is indeed deleted. Okay. So this is why you want to use the header, right? We have the authorization header and we use the header. It is not in the URL. It's not polluting the URL. First of all, secondly, it is for safety concern. We don't want to put our super secret value in the URL for everybody to see. And that's everything I want to talk about in this video. If any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.